Hi friends, Jenny D here. The world is pretty crazy right now, and so I thought this week I would just do something kind of low-key and chill and pleasant and show you all of my most beautiful dice. Getting into tabletop gaming very quickly exposed my true goblinoid nature. I am 100% dice obsessed. It happened very quickly, and now I own a lot of dice. So I'm just gonna show you all of my favorites. This isn't sponsored or anything. These are just like the prettiest dice I have. And of course, I'll tell you where they're from in case you wanna get some for yourself. I thought a fitting place to start would be the very first dice set I ever bought. I actually bought these years ago before I started playing D&D. I just thought they were pretty when I saw them in a store and I was like, maybe these will be useful someday. These are Chessex Frosted Teal with White. I actually lost the D6 from this set a long time ago. I think I probably took it out of the set to use as like a regular die for some other game and then just never put it back. Thankfully, I don't play a rogue, so it doesn't come up much. Another funny thing about this set is that it is pretty much a perfect match for my hair, but I bought this set years before I dyed my hair this color. One of the first sets that I bought once I did start playing D&D was this limited edition Critical Role bronze set. I really like metal dice. I like the weight of them. I like how they feel when you roll them. It feels very serious. These aren't available anymore, unfortunately, so I feel really lucky that I nabbed them when I did. The next set I'm gonna show you is the one that I primarily use when I'm DMing, and I've been keeping it in this beautiful wormwood vault with the art of Devon Rue on the front. I use these when DMing because I think it's funny because they have tiny skulls in them, and as the DM, I am often trying to kill my players in some way. Not like genuinely trying to kill them, but I am playing characters who are trying to kill them. These are from Cozy Gamer Shop. I think the D4 is my favorite because you can see the skull the most clearly, but I also really like that on the d20, the skull is like right under the 20. So if I roll a natural 20 when attacking a player, it's like, time for death. Okay, this set was gifted to me and it is hands down one of my favorite sets. This is Violet Incantation from Seer Sword. These dice have like big magical girl vibes. Personally, I've been using them for Nightshade, which is my D&D character Ashling's pseudo dragon familiar because Nightshade is a black pseudo dragon with little purple nightshade flowers down her back. I know a lot of dice will put a special symbol on the 20 face of the D20, but these actually have cute little star and moon symbols on the highest face of every die. Speaking of magic, I was also gifted this witchcraft set from Secret Cat Shop. Secret Cat Shop has been doing dice that are themed after Studio Ghibli movies, so these are the Kiki's Delivery Service dice. It's funny, I have almost no red in my dice collection because it's just not a color that I normally go for, but I think these are so cute and the color scheme is perfect. So I know I said I've been using the Violet Incantation dice for Nightshade, but I actually just bought some dice specifically for Nightshade, so I'll probably be using both sets. I don't know why one familiar needs two dedicated sets of dice, but that's what I'm doing. These are the Die Hard Dice Moonstone Dreamwalker. I'm obsessed with these dice. It's funny because in still photos, I feel like they don't really look like anything special. They look really dark and they don't seem to have much color to them, but photos completely fail to capture what makes these dice so beautiful because it is all about the movement and the interplay of the light with these colors. They feel very like nebula-esque. Okay, so I was already obsessed with these Forest 3D beige and black dice from Q Workshop when I first saw them online. I ordered them so immediately. And then while they were in the mail to me, I saw a post in a dice group that I was in where somebody was repainting them and they were painting all of the leaves in different shades of green and leaving the numbers in beige. And that made them a lot more readable. So I think I'm gonna do that to mine. And my thought is that if it goes well, I'll get a second set of these exact same dice and then paint those too, but with like autumn colors. Because my D&D character, Ashling, her hair changes with the seasons and has little leaves and flowers growing from it. So I think it would be pretty cool if when it was autumn in the game, I rolled with the autumn dice and when it was spring or summer, I rolled with the spring and summer dice. These were a Valentine's Day gift from a friend. They are the Storm Green and Pink from Crafts and Wonders on Etsy. These are so perfect for Ashling and they are so delicate. They're like mostly transparent, but with these little wisps of pink and green and like beautiful fine glitter. Although I have to say that my first session rolling with these was awful. Ashling didn't hit anything for like four con consecutive turns in like our major boss battle that we had been building to for weeks and weeks. But I'm willing to forgive them once. And finally, who doesn't love stuff in miniature? I got this itty bitty scorched rainbow set at a convention, but I actually keep these little guys in my purse. I have not come across a circumstance yet where I need polyhedral dice randomly, but that's not to say it's never gonna happen. I just wanna be prepared. Those are all of my favorite sets, but I do have some individual D20s. I tend to buy single D20s when the full set is really expensive. And I have a few other miscellaneous dice that I wanna show off too. So this one is a favorite of some of the other 
other players in my party. This is the fantastic glass D20 from Crystal Maggie. This one is so simple, and I think that's what makes it so elegant and so beautiful. This is a luxury die for sure -sies. I also have, this is my only gemstone die. This is green fluorite from You Are Wizards on Etsy. I know people have mixed feelings about gemstone dice because they're like a little fragile, and then also there are often flaws in the stones, which I think is kind of part of what makes them special. I also ordered a single Scorched Rainbow Mythica D20 from Die Hard Dice. I wanted the full set, but at the time couldn't afford it. I'm really into the Scorched Rainbow finish. I know that it's available on a lot of different kinds of metal dice, and I'm just like always a sucker for it. My last solo D20 was gifted to me. This is a keyfish die. It has a tiny little goldfish in it. The creator is actually running a Kickstarter right now where you can get D20s or full dice sets with tiny little goldfish in them. I'll link to it in the description. They're already fully funded, but if you want goldfish dice, that's where you get them. One of my absolute favorite artisan dice makers is Yanir. Man, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And I was at a con, I think it was Gen Con, where she had just brought a bunch of miscellaneous flawed dice with her to give out. And she gave me this slightly flawed Astral Sea D10, and it is seriously one of the most beautiful dice I've ever seen. I know it's sort of weird to just have like one D10 out of a set, but her dice are really hard to get a hold of, so I don't know when I will be able to get a full set. For now, I am thrilled to have this one D10. Also, I have a patron named Nick who has made me some really beautiful handcrafted stuff over the years, and one of the things that he has made for me is these beautiful custom aluminum D6s. Each face says D2, D3, D4, but DI, like, like Ginny D. I actually loved this idea so much that I asked his permission to sort of build on that concept for the dice set that I am working with Wormwood on. I don't know how much I can say about that, but I will link in the cards to their video about that. It's upcoming. I feel like this is either gonna be a video that nobody cares about or a video that does really surprisingly well. So please tell me in the comments whether or not you enjoyed me showing you my favorite dice. If you didn't, that's totally fine. No harm, no foul. I will not do any more. But if you did enjoy it, let me know. I know that there are multiple sets of dice that are coming to me in the next few weeks slash months. And you know, if I do regular dice videos, that makes dice a business expense, which means I could write them off on my taxes. Just saying. Please tell me all about your favorite dice in the comments. I would love to hear your recommendations. I am always ready to check out more dice. Tell me about your favorite artisan dice makers. I follow dozens of them on Instagram and Twitter already, and I would love to follow dozens more.